Welcome back everyone to 6.2, the natural logarithmic function. In this video, we would like to apply this thing that we talked about last time, mainly logarithmic differentiation. So we'll apply this in this first problem and then we'll do a few other derivative and integral problems really quick and that'll be the end of this section. All right, so let's get to it. So we have this relatively complicated function, right? We'd have to do a product rule and a chain rule and a quotient rule, lots of chain rules in fact. And the claim is this is a lot easier done with logarithmic differentiation. So let's try to use these steps, right? So the first step in logarithmic differentiation, according to the step up above, is that we want to apply a natural logarithm to both sides. So if I do that, I have the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of a bunch of stuff, right? My horrible function here. With a goal in mind is that then we want to apply these laws of logarithms. So let me tell you, right, what laws of logarithms do you want to apply? Well, maybe the first thing is instead of dividing, right, according to the laws of logarithms, you can break this apart into subtraction, interestingly enough. So you can have this numerator, the natural log of the numerator, and then minus the natural log of the denominator. Okay, but we don't stop there, right? Now we could use another property of logarithms, right? It says we have the product of two things. Let's break that apart. And we break that apart into addition. So we have sine squared of x and then the natural log of x plus three raised to the fourth. And then of course that subtraction part, right? Natural log of five x minus eight alt raised to the 10th. And then we're still not done. We say, well, anytime we have an exponent according to the laws of logarithms, we can bring that down in front. So here we go, bringing those exponents down in front. And now the claim is we can take the derivative of this and it should be easier uh, than it was. So let's go ahead and take the derivative and we have to take the derivative implicitly. So we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So we have one over y and then the derivative of y with respect to x, right? dy dx or another way to write that is y prime. And then on this right hand side, well, the derivative of the natural log of sine of x is one over sine of x, and then times the derivative of the inside cosine of x, the two's along for the ride, and you just play this game a couple more times. Always taking the derivative of the natural log, so it's one over something, and then remembering to use the chain rule. And now the last thing, right, if I want to solve for y prime, well, I just multiply by y on both sides. And remember, I know what y is equal to. I have an equation up above that I could go ahead and just plug in. And let me go ahead and I'm going to simplify these down a little bit. Instead of cosine over sine, I'll write cotangent. And then I'll try to, yes, multiply out the 5 and 10 to make 50. So let's see. So my y function is the sine squared of x times x plus 3 raised to the 4th divided by 5x minus 8 raised to the 10th, and then all that other stuff. And again, if you're submitting, you know, into web work or quizzes or exams, you just leave it just as is. So there is my y prime, my final answer. Okay, so that is the idea behind logarithmic differentiation. This is the only problem in this section we'll use logarithmic differentiation for. I want to bring up a few more other problems, but I promise that we will come back to it. So don't forget it. It is very important. All right, so we're going to do a few easier problems, though, just to finish up the section, right? So I can take the derivative of the natural log, and there's two natural logs, one within each other. And so we just have to carefully apply this chain rule. The five's along for the ride, and then one over t, I can cancel a little bit. Let me simplify this down. And this becomes two t plus three over t times natural log of t. And then thinking how can we go backwards, right? So I have an integral of something one over t natural log of t from nine to 10 dt. And this should look a little bit familiar from my answer up here. So I think, you know, these are somewhat related, but let's imagine that they weren't, you know, how would we do this? And the idea is that this is some u substitution. So if I let u be equal to the natural log of t, 
Well, then I can calculate out what du would be equal to, right? du would be 1 over t dt. I notice my t's here are positive. They're 9 and 10, so I don't really have to worry about the absolute value. So let me go ahead and calculate out then my integral of 1 over u, and then instead of my 1 over t dt, I'm going to switch it out for a du. So when I integrate that, I have the natural log of the absolute value of u, which if I substitute back, this is going to be the natural log of the natural log of t. And now remember, this is a definite integral. So I'm evaluating from 9 to 10. So this is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of the natural log of t. Uh, evaluated from 9 to 10. So let me go ahead and plug in these things. First I plug in 10, and then I would subtract away, and I will plug in 9. And now this goes back to what I was saying earlier, right? The natural log of 10 is going to be a positive number, and the natural log of 9 is going to be a positive number. So we really don't need those absolute value signs. So instead, I could just write the natural log of the natural log of 10 minus the natural log of the natural log of 9. And that would be my final answer. All right, and that is the end of the story here in 6.2, the natural logarithmic function. Join me next time to talk about its inverse, the natural exponential function. I'll see you then.